Hey there, gorgeous gays! Version 2 here, back at it again with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Wave 2 of the Booster Course Pass is here, so it gives me another opportunity to play a game that I love, that I haven't touched since the last wave came out and I did the stream for it. So no, I don't have the stars for the, um, for the previous two cups. Not like, the, like getting three stars for it. No, I, I still don't have that. I assume? <laughs> I haven't even done it on Mirror or 200. And I got- I'm, I only got two stars on one of those. <laughs> but I still- I'm, I'm still excited though. But I am still excited. But I am still excited. Do I just stick with my gold car? Or should I change it up? I know I love my gold car and my faceless face. I do love that a lot. I do love that a lot. But like, we could also do like, Breath of the Wild Link on the Master Cycle shit. But that's also a thing that exists, right? Yeah. Yeah, Master Cycle Zero is like that. Nah, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know what I am! I know what I am! I know what I am! Yeah! Gold cart shit! Woohoo! Anyway, so we have two new um, two new cups to do. We have... Oh, uh, uh, sorry, no, um... I oh, you know two ones. I was about to say, where, where, where are they? So we have the turnip and the helicopter hat. Propeller cup, there it is. Um, God, there's gonna be so many fucking um, tracks in this game by the end of it, holy shit. So we have two new ones, and uh, this is a pretty exciting thing. We've got a number of um, two of things. We've got just a, straight up a brand new course. I mean, it says Ninja Hideaway is a new course here, but also that was from Tua. But also Sky High Sunday saying it's a new course, but we'll see how it goes. And obviously there's a big one, but we'll get to it when we get to it. And no, the big one isn't Wallow Witch of Pimple, but that is a big one. So we're gonna do these solo, we'll jump online, do a bit of that. I'm excited to see what we've got. The tour courses last time were so good. The tour courses last time were so good that I'm excited to see more, um, more tour courses. Uh, they just seem to be really sick. Because again, I like having not played Tua, and also Tua plays completely differently than this. If, if a course is from Tua, it's basically a new track, right? <laughs> new York Minute. Broadway music! It's weird to have New York Minute and also New Donk City. <laughs> They're not in the same game, but this is basically New Donk City, is it not? <laughs> Mario Circuit 3. Oh hell, oh hell yeah. Hell yeah. Ah, oh, I can already see what we're doing. Oh, listen to the music. Funky and groovy, hell yeah. Central Park, there's giant Goombas! There's giant Goombas! Or are they, or are they just New Yorkers? I'm not sure. Ah! Oh god. Oh god. Ah! Hell yeah. It, it is interesting to, like, to have, like, a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that just has, like, real world places in it. It is kind of funny. It is kind of funny that real, like, real world places are just in Mario Kart now. I love how they, like, change the lives. I do love how they do that. It is, it is, it is sick. I, just, I, I, I super appreciate how they change the lives. <laughs> like, there's, there's stuff that they do with these tracks that I'm just like, I don't really know. No! I still got hit by it! Fuck! I thought I could skirt to the side. No! No! No. <laughs> I missed everything. God damn it. There's the taxis, because of course there's the taxis. Because of course there's the taxis. The New York cab. No, I don't have an item! I honk at the shell aggressively enough. No, come on! Okay. okay. It didn't hit me, thank you. Get hit by my shell! Oh, the items change that too. I was quite. I used the mushroom thing that'd be an item soon. But no, the item. Change. Oh, that's what it's <laughs> oh, we're going into Broadway. Nice. <laughs> we're in Broadway. Burning DK. I don't live in New York. Oh my god. I don't live in New York. How accurate is this place? Did I have to get hit by everything at the end? Fuck all of you. I got hit by everything at the end there. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, I got hit by everything at the end there. I am way too rusty at Mario Kart. I am way too fucking rusty at Mario Kart. God damn it. 
God damn it. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Mario Second 3. Final Destination. SNES goals is a really just Final Destination for Mario Kart. That's what it is. I think some um some SNES tracks come back and they're like, they're amazing, right? Like Rainbow Road SNES, I fucking love that stage. I fucking love that stage. Classic music. Oh. <laughs> See, I'm rusty. Rusty as hell. Whee! I got a purple! I got a purple! Oh god! Oh god! Wow, that is a that is a tight turn. Wow. On 150 cc I need to oh, get the brakes on that. Wow. <laughs> tight fucking turns. Okay. This stage has some turns that are, um, very much you can tell that were designed around old Mario Kart and not new Mario Kart. <laughs> There's some turns that are just definitely just, like, a lot tighter or, um, rapidly shifting than, like, modern Mario Kart courses. Built for less speed, less boosts. <laughs> okay, if I take this bike, can I do that breaking? Yeah, you can, yeah, you can. That works. There we go. That's how you do it. Get away from me! God damn it. See, you put me on the final destination track, and look how far ahead I am of everyone. Put me on the final destination shit. And hell yeah. Fucking zoom bars. See, you know why that is? Because this is a good skill track. Don't worry about bullshit stuff again. Don't point out how bad I'm still going. Oh. God damn it, stop giving me coins! Stop giving me coins! I'm getting hit by everything! Fucking assholes. Stop it! Oh, for fuck's sakes! For fuck's. Fuck off! I'm being Mario Kart it again. God damn it. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? Fuck off. Fuck off. God damn it. God damn it. Assholes! Yeah, I, I forget. It's Mario Kart 8. Being in, um, if you're in first, hitting the double boxes is so important for these coins. Like, in Mario Kart 7, you can get away with hitting singles because you always get defensive items. But because coins exist, first place is highly encouraged to get um, double boxes. But they need to be a priority, so you at least get some defensive. It's feeling in the world, isn't it? Well, again, I wasn't getting doubles, so it's kind of, it's somewhat my fault. It's somewhat my fault. I wasn't getting doubles. That's why Mario Kart 8 on the Wii sucks, because you can only hold one item. So if you're in first place and you get a coin, good as fuck, and you have no control over it. By the way, Calamari does it. I know people love the train stage. Fuck. Yeah, I got the drop. I got the drop, though. Why are those arrows there? Those are the arrows that were on New York Minute. Why are they there? Why were they there? I know people have their issues with the DLC for the, um, like, the booster ball stuff. About, like, the graphics are not up to par with, um, the, the rest of the, um, um, like the courses in the game. Excuse me, what? Excuse me, what? Excuse me, what? What? <laughs> Fuck sakes. How are they getting so many red shells? Oh god. What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? What? This is not Calamari, does it? This isn't Calamari, does it? Do I have a Calamari, does it? Um, uh, Tuggle exactly like that left. That's cool. 
That's cool. Okay, so Caramelo, you guys have got reinvented too. Whee! Don't give me the shell. Thank you! Thank you! Yay! Yay! I did it! I actually got first in a race. That's a cool way to reinvent Calamari, does it? Fuck you, avoid the train, be careful. <laughs> yeah, like, again, I know people have issues with the graphics, and I can definitely tell that, like, yeah, these are not up to the same level as, like, the base game stuff. I just don't care that much. I could obviously prefer it if it was better, but I don't care that much, because, like... Well, Mario Kart 8's lighting is really good, and also the quality of the racetrack itself is what matters to me. By the way, Waluigi Pinball is back! Waluigi Pinball's back! Oh my god, I missed the trick. Whee! Yeah, Waluigi Pinball, let's go! Ah, uh, you got you know, the item sound effects when you get the items. Yeah, I forgot about that. That makes the oh, that's cool. It's back, baby. It's back. Yeah. Woo! See, people love this track for like the aesthetic and, um, and everything. I love it for the turns. The turns are so fun in this track. Like the, just the way it weaves into each other, I like. And then this part's just danger. <laughs> I didn't mean to throw away the other one. Where's this? So that sound effect's gone. So that sound effect's gone. The that sound effect's gone. That's not bad. Huh. They kept the one on the item, but they didn't keep the one when you- Cause you're like- Cause it's like you're losing a ball. Like you- Like haha you lost a ball. Like- that sounds cool. I kind of want to hold on to this in case I can get killed. If I'm going to talk over to this over to this. Yeah, well you've got one too. Shit. And okay, now you've got one too. You ever took me. You can see this better in the game than I am. Why would you use it there? I can't tell what your plan was. I mean, well, um, all these people are very hey, no, the man himself in Smash. He doesn't deserve a spot in Smash. He doesn't deserve it. <laughs> I think I'm there. So they've included most of the sound effects except for the finishing one. It's weird that that's the one that they don't have. Like, that's the one that's not here. Is the one when you go into the end. They've kept so many others, it's weird that they, that they, like, don't have one of them. Like, you think if they were gonna have some of them, they'd have all of them. Going down the side so I don't get hit by the balls. <laughs> Paranoid! Am I not even gonna need this horn? I've just been holding onto it the entire time and I don't need it. <laughs> That's track I know. So I did well. Better. I did better. <laughs> hey, I still won at least. I at least still won overall. I am way too rusty at Mario Kart. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm way too fucking rusty at this game. We did it! Woohoo! Yeah. Congratulations! I still really like the um the parade from uh, Double Dash. I still really like that. <laughs> I mean, obviously, if I had to choose between Double Dash having 16 tracks and this not having some like having that thing, but having goddamn near 100 tracks, I'll choose the game with 100 tracks. But still. <laughs> Mario Kart Day Deluxe is still, I think, the best Mario Kart's ever been. But I can be honest with the shortcomings. <laughs> I still prefer how 7 controls personally, but... <laughs> anyway, who is ready? Who's fucking ready? Who is fucking ready? Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy fucking shit! 
Oh my god. Oh my fucking shit. Pissing piss balls. Sydney is confirmed canon! Sydney is real! Oh my god, Luna Park's there. Oh my god, Luna Park's there. Center point tower's there, fuck yeah. Seafood bar, bloopers. Are we like at the rocks too? Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Actually, no, this is near the opera house. This is near the opera house. It's the opera house, look! I live in Sydney, by the way. In case you don't know- Oh my god, we're going to the opera house? Holy shit, it looks like the inside of the opera house. Oh my god. Hey, it's got the pylons. Nice. Oh, oops. It has the pylons that are actually part of the Harbour Bridge. Nice. Luna Park! The Paris Wheel, the very go round. Yeah! The giant spinny thing. Hell yeah. Harbour Bridge. Sydney Harbour Bridge. Yeah! Oh, that's cool. Yeah, the middle of Sydney Harbour Bridge, like, actually is, like, um, actually there's, um, things going in the middle. It's not just, like, a, a, a divided thing. It's, like, actually a ship in the middle. Nice! There's all your tall buildings around the side there. Oh, yeah, actually, we can see how it looks in Mario Kart. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know this track. Oh. Oh, it's the Fairy Docks! Oh, it's the Fairy Docks! Nice! Town Hall. There's, that's, that is, that is just Town Hall. There's the Fairies. Nice. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, this is like the, the um, I don't, I don't I remember the actual name of it, the walk alongside the harbour. I, there's a lot of things about Sydney that I hate. We have a beautiful fucking harbour, though. We have a beautiful fucking harbour in this city. So, I'm glad that the, the focus is on the harbour. Sydney Harbour Bridge, jump over it. I've been on top of the harbour bridge, right? One of, uh, a present that I got one year, um, for Christmas, I believe, was um, a walk on top of Sydney Harbour Bridge. I've stood on top of it. It's uh, quite high up and scary. Oh, nice! Yeah, the back... Yeah, Sydney, um, Sydney Opera House is like on the edge um, of the water. So, like, that's what it... That is indeed what it looks like. Um, at the edge of the water there. Yeah, there's the fairies. You see the fairies there. This is so cool! I know other people, when they play in, like, their cities, will, will have this... Um, will have this. But, yo! It's cool to have Sydney in this! Again, like, the harbour is the one part of the city that I actually fucking will say, like, yeah, I do like that. <laughs> like, um, all around Darling, um, Darling Harbour, the Dark Circular Key. I love all that shit. <laughs> like, it's, it's like the good part of the city. It can be a bit tourist trappy and shit like that, sure, but it's, it's a city <laughs> and stuff like that. No, the, the, the panelling on the walls here, that's spot on, that's spot on what the inside of the, um, the Opera House looks like. If you go to the Opera House and you look around like the walls and everything, that's spot on what they look like. Those panels. It's that is spot on for the interior. It's obviously not as big as you're driving through and stuff like that. But like the paneling and the and the stands, that is spot on for the um um for the Opera House. That track is awesome! Again, I can't like I bet other people when they play in their ones will have that same reaction. But there's a lot of Sydney there. And obviously, like, you could do Sydney with just the obvious things, because obviously Sydney has Opera House and Harbour Bridge. Like, they're the things that if you know about Sydney, you'd know. Well, Opera House, because it's a funny triangle building, and the Harbour Bridge is like, is like, there's a lot of iconic bridges in the world, so it does kind of get, it's not up there as like one of the most iconic, but like, if you had to think of Sydney, Sydney Harbour Bridge would be one there. But, um, it wasn't just those things. The Centerpoint Tower is in the background. You don't have to write it all, but I could see Centerpoint Tower in the background. Um, the fact that it has the ferry is, it is cute. It's well done. It's well done. Again, for other cities, they probably do have that. Well, maybe Sydney is just straight up the best, uh, well-realized one. I don't know, but... The Sydney one, the Sydney one, as someone who lives in Sydney, and as someone who hates this city, except for, like, for a lot of, like, cultural reasons, and also a lot of just, like, physical getting around reasons, this city also sucks in a lot of ways. But, as someone who doesn't like the city, but I can... I can definitely say I do like the harbor. Sydney, Sydney Sprint, I think it's called, gets my personal props up. That gets that gets my thumbs up. I love that shit. That is a that is a well done course. You did well. You did well, Mario Kart. Hell yeah. Like I obviously saw the pictures of it where it had. Um, Opera House um, and Harbour Bridge, and I did notice the um, center point tower in the background. I did not notice it in the background in the pictures, but seeing the other stuff is cool as well. 
Oh, there's like a little jump there if you have a boost for that. Nice. Where does this track come from? This ice one. I, don't, I didn't see the name or anything of this track, so I have no idea what it is. It's nice. It's nice. One of the most fascinating, interesting calls in terms of like level layout and stuff like that, but not every level needs to be that. Some really good Mario Kart tracks are just really solid cool courses. GBA? I feel like GBA tracks so frequently get good blocks. There's a lot I feel like I feel like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe does a really good job at blowing up GBA tracks. There's some GBA, because GBA is kind of like similar to like um, Super Mario Kart in terms of like design and stuff for a lot of its levels. A lot of, like a lot of GBA is similar, I, um, I believe, in terms of just like relatively flat areas um, with basic turns and stuff. But there's a lot of GBA tracks that have gotten a go up in this game. Obviously one of the standouts is Ribbon Road. Obviously Ribbon Road is one of the standouts, because Ribbon Road in this game fucking rules. Mushroom Gorge! Iconic Mario Kart Wii track. Iconic Mario Kart Wii track. Is it good? I don't know, but it's sure as shit iconic. Like, if I think of Mario Kart Wii, I first think of Coconut Mold, then I think of Mushroom Gorge. I think the next one I think of is the, um... The, um, the snow one with the half pipe at the end. I think that's Mario Kart Wii. That'd be next. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of that one because Mario Kart Wii introduced tricks. And that was like the trick track. Um, of, um, like you go, like you weave, um, and see the side of the half pipe on a trip. Uh, tricks. I mean, to be fair, this is also a trick track because you can get tricks on the bottom. Oh, the blue one oh, um, flies. Nice. Nice blue one flies. I like that. I like that. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Because that wasn't a thing. They did a good job giving the um, LGBT vehicles so they aren't just flat. It helps them a lot. It helps them a lot. Wasn't the cloud one in the previous, um, uh, the previous wave also a GBA one? The Cloudland one? I think I'll just... My brain is saying it. We all know how, um, how solid that brain of mine is. <laughs> I like how there's a flying one. I do, I, I do appreciate having a flying mushroom. Oh, oh god. Let's see, I'll, I'll take one thing. And it's by the end of this, we're gonna have so many cards. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. So that's, that's the cool thing about having so many tracks in this, is that like... Oh, oh no! No! Is that even outside of like how good are the tracks individually and stuff like that? Um, like, uh, are, are the tracks like the best tracks ever? Um, when like when you just try them out like in a setting like this, that isn't like obviously better tracks is better and good and stuff like that. But we're just gonna be at a point where you go online to play this and there's gonna be a hundred fucking tracks to choose from, and that's just awesome. We get Mario Kart Nine for another ten years. Mario Kart 9 will not happen until at least the predecessor, um, until the successor to the Switch. Like, I, I've seen some people say that, like, Switch 2 has got to be, like, 2023, right? Like, they're gonna, like, it's not gonna, it, like, not an up, people are now saying, it's not Switch Pro we're waiting on, it's the successor to the Switch, like, Switch 2, and it's just, like, the booster course is going till the end of next year. Splatoon 3 will have at least two years of content. The Switch 2 is a while away. By the way, Sky High Sunday. New course! Brand new fucking course! I think this is like Ninja Hideaway where it's like they're coming out for like, um, Tua and this and very similar times. Whee! Whee! What the fuck just happened there? What just happened there? Whee! Oh my god, oh my god. What is happening? I'm getting spun out a lot, and I don't think I'm being hit by items. What is happening? Oh! Oh, we're all into gravity. Whoa. 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 Whoa! Whoa! There's a lot going on here. 
Lurk what oh, there was a five more there. Feels like kinda of see through. This track is whoa. Whoa, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> there's a lot going on here. Whoa. Aesthetically this stage is beautiful. Aesthetically this stage is gorgeous. Aesthetically, this track is amazing. Are all those poles are also? Oh, oh my god! All the poles here are boost too. Oh Jesus! It's like Electrodome all over again. It's Electrodome all over again. Oh my god! This, this track is whippy, wavy. I, I really like this. No. Oh. Oh. There's underlayers to this as well. <laughs> There's a lot going on for this track. So I think you can say it's like some of the tracks haven't been like, um... Some of the other DLC courses may not like look as pretty. This track though... This track though is up there. This track's definitely fucking up there though. Wow. This track is gorgeous. On a fidelity level I don't know if it's like... I don't know, but it's just beautiful to run through, so I don't care about fidelity. So that's the thing, like, the fidelity doesn't bother me as much as long as it, like, looks cool going through it. And because the lighting is so good in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, but, but, wow, I'm here, I'm here again. Uh, for some tracks, the lighting is good enough that it makes, like, even the lower fidelity stuff look good. This is just colorful and awesome looking. I love it. I love it. <laughs> No, get back here! Fuck you! I was smashing because we had it faster. I fucked up. Get back here! Get back here! Get back here, you son of a bitch! Ah! Oh. So close. So close. So goddamn close. Is that the- Oh my god. That's the only track I didn't get first in this cup. Damn it! If I got first there, I would have gotten actually three stars for this one. God damn it! God damn it! I mean, Switch Two maybe twenty twenty five. I don't know. It's really it's really hard to tell how they're going to like advance past the Switch. I I didn't even get any stars last time. I at least got two that time. Yeah, and I was like, so, like, if I hit with that shell, I would have gotten it. Or if I had not used the horn accidentally early, then it would have been fine. Anyway, I'm gonna go online and school some fuckers. I'm gonna go online and school some dickheads, and by that I mean lose terribly. Maybe I shouldn't use the hyper-powered fast car when I'm mad at this. Maybe I shouldn't. You can tell I've played this game online a lot, because my ranking is like under 2,000. You can tell I've played a lot. <laughs> Mario Kart 7 online was my thing. I think I got to 10,000 in that. But just like, I mean like, ooh, Tokyo Blow. Ribbon Road though, nah, Tokyo Blow. But I mean, um, Mario Kart in general. Mario Kart 7 is, is my thing. <laughs> Mario Kart 7 is always the one I default up to. I, I, like, I, I say Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is a better Mario Kart. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe specifically, I think is a better Mario Kart game than any other Mario Kart. Um, just for sheer volume of content and um, quality of everything on an overall level. Um, but in terms of, like, a lot of personal aspects, I love 7. I don't know if I like 7 more than, um, than 8 at this point, because, again, 8 has so much to it. But, um... Like, Mario Kart DS is, where I, is when I started really falling in love with Mario Kart. Um, and then Mario Kart 7 is the one I've by far put the most amount of time into. And then Mario Kart 8 only I hate. But then Deluxe came out. But by, by, by the time, like, Deluxe had come out, I'd already, like, played a lot of Mario Kart 8. Even, even though I didn't, even though I hated it, it was the car of Mario Kart, so I wanted to play Mario Kart against me. I would play the, I'd play the game that I could play. I forgot, how, I, I forgot how online, um, online races are way more chaotic than, um, than you normally get. <laughs> and I'm just like CPUs. 
fall off. Ah, he fell off. Ah, ah he fell off. Scala, get rid of that. Get rid of that banana. I want to hit you with the green with the with the, with the shell. We have Rainbow Road for the next pack. Do you mean seven Rainbow Road? Because I absolutely 1000% agree with you. Oh, he took a shortcut! I'm going to save shots because I don't know the game. Because <laughs> I, I am not confident in my skills in this game. Um, but both Frost and Unfortunately. If you mean if you mean Mario Kart 7 Rainbow Road, I absolutely agree with you. Mario Kart 7 Rainbow Road, God tier track. Fucking God tier track. I mean, I am biased as hell towards like the point to point um, laps, uh, um, the point to point races. I love that shit. I love point to point. Do we have any of Seven's point to point races in this? Because we don't have, um, we don't have Seven Rainbow Road. Do, we, do either Woohoo Islands exist in um, this? I don't think they do. Neither of the Woohoo Islands from Seven exist in eight, or, um, in eight, do they? So we don't have any of the point to points from Seven. Point to points do exist in here because we've got the um got the warrior ones at point to point. Um and Rainbow Road 64 is point to point now into this. I know I've said it like in every single time I've mentioned Mario Kart 8. Um Rainbow Road 64 is still the best glove that any tracks have got. It went from uh, by far my most hated course in the entire series to one of the best in this game. Glove the fuck is that? Like just revitalize the entire track in so many ways. That's so barely identifiable to those guys. I take some of the uh on the YouTube on DS we went down the end of the gravity. I'm trying to think of DS as one. I'm trying to think of the DS one. That is definitely why I want to see the most out of them. Oh yeah. It's got the moon on it. How the cow did I want that? It's got the chuckle fucking moon. Clearly the best one. I'm gonna try and do this! It didn't help. <laughs> He's gonna try and get ahead, but Mushroom Boost was not enough. Because I, I remember the GameCube one. Because, um. Like, Double Dash isn't where I, I didn't fall in love with Mario Kart and Double Dash. Like, I liked it. DS is where I fell in love with it. Um. But I did play, um, a decent chunk of, uh, Double Dash. So I remember that one there. It's, it has like that giant one zoom point and stuff. I remember that being one of the hot. I remember GameCube being one of the hardest Rainbow Roads. DS oh, was the first one that um, had loops and I think half pipes. Oh, I think I know the one you're talking about now. I think. Oh, bye. I think I know the one you're talking about. Is it DS? It definitely had loopy loops. Oh, okay. Then I know what you. Okay, yeah. Then I remember DS. Then I remember DS. Yeah, the loopy loops. Okay, now I remember. Yeah, the loop de loop one, I now remember that, yeah. Mar um, Rainbow Road Wii, that's the one where at one point it has like the figure eight in the middle, right? But there's that one part where it's like a like a circle here with a hole in the middle that goes immediately into another one. Cause like you could trick over the middle if you're really fancy. That's the Wii one, right? Like I just remember that's one of the, the defining parts of it. No, I remember the DS one. DS one could be really good. Yeah, I I feel like DS Rainbow Road could get a glow up the way that um 64 had here. I do remember that one now though, I guess. Because if you got hit on the loop de loop, you just fall to your death because it didn't have anything remedy. That's the thing, I'd have to like go through old Mario Kart games to look at the tracks to just be like, oh yeah, that one needs to come back. Because it's really hard for me to remember off the top of my head. Galaxy Vibes since I had floating star bits. Oh yeah. I mean, if I had to choose one track, I know which track I'd choose. Because it's my favorite track in the entire series. And it's Airship Wars. <laughs> if I had to choose only one, it would be Airship Wars. Because that's by far my favorite track. I love Airship Fortress so much. It is my darling, it is my baby. <laughs> but, um, I'd be happy with, honestly, basically any Rainbow Road at this point. 64 got a glow up, so I can't, like, it'd be hard for them to add a Rainbow Road that I don't like. Um, any of either Woohoo Island ones from, um, from, uh, 7, I'd like. 
I'm also just biased as hell because I really like Ruru Island. <laughs> but I just like, I really like what Ruru Island is, and I like whenever, like, they don't do it anymore. Ruru Island is like, like pumped, right? Like, that was back in the week. But I like how Woohoo Island was a, like, a recurring thing that popped up in a couple different Nintendo games. I really like Woohoo Island. And that is pure um, Wii Sports Resort nostalgia though. That's pure Wii Sports Resort nostalgia. <laughs> Just because, because every sport in uh, Wii Sports Resort took place on Woohoo Island. Because every single one of them was on Woohoo Island. And you could like literally explore with the flying thing. And some of them, like, you'd move around to different parts of it. Like, it was, like, it was just a cool, it was just a like, cool vibey place. So whenever Woohoo Island came up with anything else, I was like, oh, cool. And then actually getting around, getting to, like, drive around on it, um, in 7 and stuff, it was, like, the best opportunity we've ever had to, like, explore Woohoo Island on the ground. Because you can explore it in, um... Because you can explore Woohoo Island. Oh! Wait. The race is over, right? Oh yeah, I, I was about to say, I finished, right? Yeah, I finished. <laughs> I was like, did, did I finish my laps? Yeah, I did. Because everyone else hasn't finished, so it's still going. Uh, even JBA Rainbow could be potentially good since I seem to get the tracks from care. I don't think they'll get the paper my reference in it, though. So, uh, yeah, I don't even remember what that one is. I don't even remember what JBA Rainbow is. I think something went wrong. I think something fucked up. I think something fucked up. I think something broke. I think something broke. But the music's still going, too. Like, normally if you finish, it plays the finished music even though everyone else hasn't finished, right? Right? Um... What happened? What happened? Because it didn't even make the sound when I passed the lap. Remember that um, it was in space and had um, Paper Mario Bowser Castle and Beach Castle in the background? That's cool. That's cool. My experience with GBA Mario Kart is I'm gonna have to quit. <laughs> the game broke in some capacity. I don't know what happened. But something went wrong. But something went wrong. Something went kind of fucky. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Fuck it. To celebrate having the Splatoon 3 announcement today, we're gonna do some Inkling stuff. Come baby. And do some Inkling stuff. Hell yeah. Is there an inkling cart, or is it just the bike and the quad? I don't remember. I know they've got the quad. Do they have a... Oh, yeah, they've got the... Um, the splat buggy. I don't remember that one. Hell, yeah. I don't remember the splat buggy. I want to get off Mr. Toad's wild ride. Hey, th this this Rainbow Road's okay. I don't think it's bad. It's just okay. <laughs> like it's not a bad track. I just I don't know. I feel like it misses some. It misses some of the glamour of um the, the like the the curves and stuff that like I think Rainbow Road is like identifiable as. Right? Watch me start using some, um, some cars that aren't the gold one, I'm just like, oh, I prefer the handling on this. So I, 
actually does the. I'm gonna say, I wonder if, like, um, what cars we're gonna feature. I'm not gonna do that. Does the barrel train exist in this game? I love the barrel train. I love the barrel train. I distinctly remember, again, I don't have, like, I don't, I didn't play a shitload of, um, double dash, but I distinctly remember loving this double, um, the barrel train. Uh, I am equal to it. I love the barrel train. But again, that's just the double dash thing. I have no idea how it can work. I just remember loving the the, the battle train. I should have said one of those. Ones. I also love its aesthetics. Its aesthetic is messy as hell. It looks so funny. The battle train um, is here. Oh, you mean you're neutral to this uh, train car? Ah, uh, I thought you meant neutral to the battle train. No! Yo, dodge the lightning! Actually, actually sick. Actually, pog. Fog as hell, dodge the lightning. You feel MK Rainbow, yeah. That makes sense. This track is... Again, it's not bad, it's just... I, I, I just feel like as a Rainbow Road track, it's this Like, it's by no means that bad. Honestly, I'd be hard for us to, like... How many tracks would I say in Mario Kart are, like, bad? I feel like the only tracks that are like that could be bad are the ones that are like really just annoying to do. I can't think of any on top of my head that are like bad. Ah. There may be tracks that I may not like them personally, but that might be more of a I'm not as personal as the song compared to some. Music is also I chose random combinations for the here and straight up I do prefer that. <laughs> the joke that I said has come through. I actually do prefer the handling of the Surf Gold Star. I feel like I feel it because I feel like Gold Star is meant to be obviously to be like good enough at the game that you can handle top speed and know like all the tracks well enough. Because I don't, I think I want something that turns better. <laughs> because I'm not as familiar uh, with, the, with the with the things. Pretty much use the battle train um, if I was using lightweight characters and the green fire if I was using any medium weight like um, like Luigi. I think I think the combination that I always did was barrel train with the toads for the golden mushroom. Or the go or the toads medium weight. I don't remember. I don't remember. Ninja hideaway. Ninja hideaway. Actually, go let me go back to the cars. On barrel train. On barrel train. I want to say barrel train's a thing. I don't remember if it is. It probably isn't, and I'll cry. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> There's no barrel train for me. Talking about all the time here. And it's not here. I didn't mean the steel diver. I fucked up everything. I'm apparently using the steel diver. Toad and Toad out will lie away. I think that's what I did then. I think it was barrel train both toads to get the golden mushroom. I think that was my combination. Unless we were playing on Baby Park. Unless we were playing on Baby Park. And then my combination was using um, one of the Koopa Troopers and Bowser Jr. Throw green shells across the middle, throw giant um, Bowser shells across the middle. <laughs> then that was my shit. That was my jam. Junior and one of the Coopers of the Barrel Train and um, Luigi or Junior with Green Fire. Yeah, as a Bowser Junior was just like, the giant shell was so much. So I think there's some aspects of Double Dash. So there's, like, there's things about Double Dash that I'm just like, mechanically that's really interesting, but I also don't like, I don't know about a want them to come back, so I don't know how well they would work in a modern Mario Kart setting kind of thing. Like the weight class stuff, in terms of you can only use um, certain cars, 
give you a certain type of character for like class but um class of, like weight divisions. Not, no, not that, right? But the idea of like characters having different specials. So that like every character had different um uh, like items that they could get. And the I and the big one the big one, even bigger than that, is the fact that you could swap through the driver and the backseat passenger were. So not only could you hold two items, but you could rotate which one you had out. So if you wanted to save a big item, you could put that on the driver and then just get your other little ones out um, with the backseat passenger. And then when it's ready to use the big one, switch the driver to the arm um, of the backseat. So like, those mechanics are really interesting. Those mechanics are really interesting, but it's just, I don't know if they would work in a modern Mario Kart setting. Because, I, I don't know. I mean, they've, in, they've literally already... Oops, they've already... In, what is happening here? What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? Um... So, like, they've already introduced the coin to try and stop people from, um being too powerful in the first place. So if they, so I don't think they'd turn around and just be like, oh, but if you want to get rid of the coin, just hold down the back. You can just hold the, the good item in front of you want to. And like, while the special system is cool, it make, it means certain characters are just definitively better than other characters because um, of how the specials are. Sometimes I'd use um, PD and King Boo, I just wanted to mess around. I remember them being characters that were hard for me to unlock. I remember they were characters that were hard for me to unlock. I don't know if I ever... I think I got them, I don't know though. I know the parade cart. I don't remember whether I ever got it, but I know that was like, oh, they get, they get jump off. I don't remember whether I ever actually ended up getting the parade cart, but I know that was like a big thing that I'm just like, oh, I need to get that for a long time. I don't remember if I ever actually ended up getting it though. Is the Bay Dasher in this game? No, it's just the Paling, isn't it? So many of the cars that I remember loving. Oh, no, Bay Dasher is here. No, Bay Dasher is here. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind, Bay Dasher's here. We can all stop panicking. Bay Dasher's here. We can stop panicking. <laughs> Bay Dasher was my go-to in um, Mario Kart DS. Yes, I know it was on the box art, but it was also my favorite car in the game. I want some of the fucking weird cars from DS to come back though. That I would love. I would love to see that again. DS went fucking weird with its cars. One of them was like a construction crane or like a construction like excavator thing. One of them was just Rob's fucking platform that he had with like all the spinning discs. I want to see some of the fucking like some of that weird shit come back. Like there's some weird ones here. There's fucking BMW cars in this game for some goddamn reason. <laughs> like, BMW cars exist in this game. There's some fucking weird options, right? But I want the fucking excavator back. <laughs> Where's my fucking excavator? Feeding King Buku get any of the specials? Oh yeah, that was their gimmick, yeah. Yeah, they got any of them, yeah. Service, please. Service, please. Whee! Why and Red is such a strong stack? Why and Red just look so good together? To be fair, I say that, man. Red and X color look so good together, don't they? I do just say that. I may be slightly biased. Like, white and red, fuck, they look good together. Black and red, fuck, they look good together. Purple and red, fuck, they look good together. Red and blue, damn. The dynamics of them, they look cool together. So I think I'm just biased. So I think I'm just biased. As well. Whee! Whee! You know what this is reminding me of? Just driving around in a car. I gotta do that stream where I buy um, the Labo vehicle kit again. Do the stream where I build the Labo vehicle kit, and then do a stream where I play through the entire game. Cause like, I started doing videos for it, and then I got distracted with it when I was doing my start videos for the materials and stuff like that, right? But I can't go back and do Labo now. 
The Libo vehicle kit has been sitting on my shelf for so long that the rubber bands have dried out and snapped. So I, if I was going to do, if I do, if I did the Libo vehicle kit, if I wanted to play that again, I would have to rebuy it. <laughs> I know it's still in stock in some places, so like buying it would be that hard. So remember, I did like two videos of it, um, and the Libo uh, um, and the the vehicle kit's actually really cool. It's actually really cool, but I don't feel like buy it again. Because those videos they were fun to watch. I feel like you've watched so much. I don't know. I there's just certain videos that I have that I assume that no one has fucking watched, and then when I find out people have watched them, I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> So like learning that someone actually watched my um my labo game is just like what? <laughs> I fucked up everything by the way. Everything I fucked up. Very, very bad. I fucked up like one turn getting hit by one item and then everything to piss. Yeah, I fucking sad. Well get my fucking bird. Oh he moves back! I might have been server showing him being bad. How'd I dodge that? How did I dodge that? Get hit by my things! Get hit by my fucking boomerangs! Wow, seven. Wow, seven. Oh no, she's upset! If I, if I was to do Labo again, I'd have to like film myself building it. Because I'd also need to rebuild it again. And that would just be like a chill as fuck string. Just building the Labo vehicle kit. I don't know if I could build it and then do the entire thing in um, one thing. You know, I, I don't know if I've been on Dragon Driftway for a long ass time. Let's go there. <laughs> I don't know if I've been on this track for ages. Although everyone's choosing Excite Bike. Excite Bike is a really cool track idea. I love that they included um, Excite Bike. Because that's the thing that's kind of funny to remember is that there are tracks in this game that are DLC from the original game. <laughs> Like, Excite Bike is DLC for original Mario Kart 8. <laughs> Along with, like, the F Zero tracks and stuff like that. Dragon, honestly, Dragon Driftway might be as well. I don't remember. I know there's a tree one in the DLC. Oh, like Baby Park so much. Baby Park is just chaos and it's fun. Big Baby Park. <laughs> Excite Bike is Big Baby Park, yeah. So that's what I need to do one day. I need to go through every single track that exists across all of Mario Kart and do a tier list of every single track in Mario Kart. <laughs> no! We chose Dragon Driftway 2! You bastards! You fucking bastards. Do I, get I, like, I like the look of P-Wing. P-Wing's a cool looking car. You know what? P-Wing leans further into the white and red aesthetic. Let's do that. We're going full white and red on this. And none of the gliders really lean into that. None of the gliders really lean into that. That one works. I'm spectating! Baby Park's never boys from men, at least that's how I play with my friends. Again, okay, that's what Baby Park um on GameCube. Because the shells crossed over the middle and then you so you could get the um the giant um Bowser ones. That's the that's the real shit. They're in Tokyo! They're in Tokyo! Wait, is this the Tokyo one? I think it's a Tokyo. This is cl closer to the match in the sheer chaos of Ace Park and Double Dash. Double Dash is one of the ones that I know is like beloved by the like Mario Kart community. Which I totally get why. I totally get why. Again, I still think my favorite and the best one I still would say is Mario Kart Deluxe, just for sheer content and stuff like that. What do you want from Mario Kart 9? Honestly, at this point, I don't know. At this point, I don't know. Like, nothing jumps out to me as being, like, immediately, this is the type of feature that I'd want in a new mainland Mario Kart. Like, th there's two, there's two things 
that are the same thing, just different approaches. That would be the obvious thing. And it's either a single player mode in the vein of Mario Kart DS's mission mode, or a single player mode in the in the vein of like Crash Team Racing Adventure mode. Like those are the obvious things that jump to my mind. Sydney Sprint. But I don't like the chances of that happening. I don't like the chances of that happening. But in terms of like obvious things, it would be that. I mean, some of the things that they've done from Tua would be the obvious things for me as well. Like, more characters, more cards, um, outfits and customization, things like that. But I wouldn't want it to be in like a free to play slash battle pass monetization method. Like, I would like that extra cost customization options that Mario Kart Tour has, but I would want it done in a not shitty way, which wouldn't happen either. I don't want a battle pass, I don't want microtransactions. I'd want it to just be like a fun thing you want to unlock. Un like, if you, if you were to do it, if you were to do it, I think it would be things like, on a per character basis. Right? Like, if you win enough cups or enough races with um, with Rosalina, you unlock her Halloween outfit. If you like get a certain above, uh, uh, if you get like a good time on a time trial with this character, then you'll unlock an outfit for like that. I'd want it to be that, but that is such an old school style of thinking that I can't imagine it happening. Like that's how old video games were designed, not new ones, <laughs> right? But if you wanted to do it for like encouraging like online play and stuff like that, it could just be like, hey, play races online. Like when you um, like when you do enough races, you'll unlock a thing for a character. And like it could just be like a random pull from like the things that character can unlock. Or like you know how you collect coins? Have the coins that you collect be like have like an overall total um, for the coins you collect, but also have like a per character coin. And when you get to a certain amount of points for that character, then you want the more customization. And then they just add some more over time. But I can't imagine that ever happening. I can only imagine them doing it in either Battle Pass, play enough matches in this limited time window to get it, or the stream organization. So while I say I want it, it's kind of like a, I want it, but I know if I got it, it'd be fucked and I wouldn't want it then. I do seem to really be here a lot. I look so pretty in the um, underwater parts were nice at the distance. I think it's amazing nice stone um freeze when we hit them. I don't like I remember that track Ow! Please no! Please no! Fuck you! Okay, you know what? I really like this combination. These guys on the cave wing, I really like this. I like the way this car feels. And it also looks really cool too. The P-Wing is just a sick looking car. <laughs> the P-Wing is such a sick looking car. Like even that Mario vibe aesthetic while looking like a race car, it's done really well. But I, I really like how this feels. <laughs> I might use this for a while. I've I've gotten too rusty to use the full, the, the full gold card. Full gold card doesn't turn as tight. Ice Ice Outpost, I love this track. I so rarely see it. <laughs> One of those it um, likes ice levels. I mean, I like Ice Levels too. Um, I think as I feel like this is a game where different terrains can be like interesting things in this. Like ice terrain makes you rethink how you have to drive. It's the same with like underwater levels of flying. They make you rethink it's not just the normal controls. It does affect how your um, how your cart controls, which I think is a, like a good thing. But yeah, like, yeah. Again, Mario Kart, Mario Kart 9 is something where it's hard for me to just pinpoint and say these are the features I'd want. Because I could say things, but that is not likely. And in terms of any new ways of like expanding on how the game controls the driving sense, I can't mentally picture it. But they. Like, they introduced, um... 
They introduce like um, underwater and gliding and tricks and stuff like that. And it's like, I love all of those features, but I wouldn't have been able to come up with it before I did it. Um, like before I saw it. So, what do you want to think of it? Really hard in the original, I think already a bit slippery. So that's kind of why Mario Kart 7 is my favorite. I feel like Mario Kart 7 is... Well, I get all the time. In terms of control, Mario Kart 7 is my favorite. In terms of control, Mario Kart 7 is my favorite. In terms of overall as a game, Mario Kart 7 is my favorite. But, um... In terms of controls, I think that's why 7 is my favorite. I, I feel like 7 has the most happy controls out of all. Like, Mario Kart 8 is good controls, don't get me wrong, but I do feel like Mario Kart 8 is a little looser in its controls compared to 7. And it's the same with DS, I feel like like DS also for me has like really oh whoops. I thought that was a slip down. Whoops. Like uh, Mario Kart DS I also feel like has really snappy controls. That's why I don't like Mario Kart with there's just something about Mario Kart Wii that I do not like how it controls. I don't know what it is, I just don't like the way um, driving feels in Mario Kart Wii. I, I cannot think of what it is. I don't know whether it's too stiff, whether it just feels unresponsive. I also think Mario Kart Wii aesthetically is fucking good as well. <laughs> I feel like the Wii was a good console for... Um, doing a lot with uh, low resolution and low fidelity in a lot of its games, but Mario Kart Wii just looks kind of muddy and muted. Mario Kart Wii was too bouncy? It might be that, yeah. It might be that. There's just something about the controls for it that just rubbed me the wrong way. And again, aesthetic, aesthetically, Mario Kart Wii just looks muddy and muted. It like I, like just in terms of its colors, which again it which I feel oh, hi, so that voice again, which kind of sucks because I do feel like it was um the Wii did a lot of good despite only being a 480p console um for a lot of its games like Mario Kart Galaxy oh, not Mario Kart Galaxy Super Mario Galaxy still looks fantastic to this day. To be fair, also Super Mario Sunshine looks fantastic to this day. Um, I mean, it's something that Nintendo's been good at for a while, right? Ever since the GameCube, I feel like Nintendo's been really good at nailing an art style and aesthetic that fidelity has not fucking mattered. I don't think the 64 counts as that. The 64 is fucking ugly. <laughs> it's iconic and nostalgic, but games on 64 look ugly. A lot of it is a lot of flat colors not many interesting shades or anything like that. The 64 is aesthetically an ugly as sim console. There's a couple games that stand out. There's a couple games that stand out as being better than that, but I think overall, I think it's an ugly ass con- uh, it, it's ugly ass games. Um, but I feel like since the GameCube Nintendo has been really good at nailing their aesthetic. Um, but Mario Kart weighs an exception. Uh, I'd say, I'd say the Switch I'd say the Switch is a step back in terms of aesthetic um, compared to the Wii U. The minimalization of all of the UI across a lot of their games is uninteresting, and there's definitely a tendency of a few too many Switch games that kind of lose any particular aesthetic and kind of just start looking like black colors and or plastic again. Uh, a lot of Mario Kart, uh, like a, a lot of um, Nintendo Wii games, and a lot of Nintendo ones, I feel like are really cool and stuff like that. Um, how much they nail the aesthetics. <laughs> but um, like there are some beautiful games on the Switch, but I just think there's, a, there's also a few that start falling a bit too much to be a bit too standard, not going in any particular interesting direction with this aesthetic. Like Skyward Sword, I think, nails it. I think Skyward Sword's middle. Um, Breath of the Wild. I think Breath of the Wild's minimalist aesthetic works really well with what that game is. You want the um, UI to be minimalist in Breath of the Wild because you want to be paying, paying attention to the world so much that you, you want the UI to not pull you out of the experience of the world. And Odyssey, to an extent, is that, but I think 
Odyssey can have a bit more fun with it. But Odyssey gets away by looking for some of the signs because it goes for such weird ideas for a Nintendo game. Um, little lots of settings that looks really interesting. Uh -huh. So there's only been some such good things, but like, eh, it kind of looks like, like g generic Nintendo S look. Like a Nintendo look where it looks like it's been polished over a few too many times. That it looks a bit too corporatized. But there's definitely certain elements of Switch games. Um, for a, there's a, there's an, there's definitely a trend with a number of um, like Nintendo games on the Switch where they're feeling too safe. And a bit too corporatized, where it's just this is the brand, and we must protect the brand, and everything must look like the brand and stuff like that. Probably because they're in such a weak position to switch sales and stuff like that, but they don't really let us really mess with that. We'll go out of it too much. I mean, it's something that people have said before. It's definitely nothing for you or uh, a new observation or anything. Nintendo is definitely a company where sometimes they do their most interesting things when they're not doing well. When they're not doing well, they start taking the best, the best types of risks. Or so they're succeeding too much that they kind of avoid most of this. Not to say that there isn't some aspects of um, the Switch where they're not nailing it. Again, Breath of the Wild is one of the best games ever fucking made. So Breath of the Wild is something where it's just like, yeah, they nailed that. That was the beginning of the Switch's life cycle. And Odyssey is a fantastic Mario game. And Splatoon, is, like Splatoon 2, is really good. Octo Expansion is one of the best games on the platform and stuff like that. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. Like, it's not that I hate the Switch, it's not that I hate the games on the Switch, it's just, there's a number of things where it's just like... Overall trends are just like... I don't know. I, I, as a console, I love the Switch. I love how the Switch functions as a console. And the Switch does have a lot of good shit on there. But, um... I don't know, I feel like overall its library is not as special as some of the previous Nintendo consoles. I mean, it also is, there's a shitload of games on the Switch. It's also that there is a shitload of games on the Switch. So there's more space for stinkers and stuff like that. But like, Yoshi's Crafted World. Uh, like, look at, if you look at something like Yoshi's Crafted World on Switch. It's just like, right? Risk, uh, maybe there is some. There, maybe there are some parts of Nintendo's like um, stuff where it just will start to be taken again. Because you have a look at something like um, what's it called? I haven't played it. I haven't seen it, but just what people have said about it and just like inherently what it is. Um, what's it called? Kirby in the Forgotten Land. Like Kirby in the Forgotten Land is taking a risk for a Kirby, right? It's doing something brand new with the, with the concept of the in terms of aesthetics and gameplay and stuff like that. Um, I know people like things about Star Allies and stuff like that, and yeah, that makes sense. But from what I understand from what people are saying about Star Allies, Star, Star Allies is a very safe Kirby game, in that Star Allies, um, the robot game, Triple Deluxe, and Return to Dreamland are all very similar Kirby, Kirby games. So they're kind of safe, but, for, um, but, um, Forgotten Land is, like, they're taking a risk. It seems to be a lot of people like, saying it, that it's, like, one of the best Kirby games that I've ever You know, there's elements of that stuff. There's still, there's still something. Uh, a couple of, I fell asleep because it was just boring. Yeah, like, yeah, like, I mean, to be fair, to be fair, has any Yoshi's Island game been good since, um, Actually, Yoshi's really well. People say good things about Yoshi's really well. But like, I, th I, I think of the, um, like, the Yoshi's Island game that was on the, um, the 3DS or whatever it was. The one where when you op when you op when you boot up the game, it sounds like a five-year-old who just learned what a kazoo is the first time, and that, and they recorded the intro song for it. Will you play Kirby in Forgotten Land? 
Ah, uh, well, I mean, sometimes you can be playing something like Kevin's Blood Knight. It's just like, I don't play games on my own time because I'm just streaming at that time. I'd be interested in playing at my own time. I just don't play games on my own time anymore, so. <laughs> Having the opportunity to do that is a lot too. And for like a streaming thing, I don't know. I feel like, because there's so many Kirby games out there, and people say so many things about them. If I was gonna play Kirby, I'd like play Kirby as a series. Kirby and like just a random Kirby game, unless people specifically said go play this one on screen. I wouldn't just do a random Kirby game on screen. Will you love game plus? Yeah. I I know people still don't think it's as good as like the original like Yoshi's Island, which is still like from my understanding the pinnacle of like Yoshi games. But yeah. So I guess Yoshi's just sucked for a while. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, obviously the best, obviously the best Yoshi game is the Game Boy Advance one. The, the, the gravity one where you tilt the GBA left and right. That's obviously the best one. TikTok one. That's obviously the best Yoshi game. Obviously that one. <laughs> right? Obviously. So you like, you look at, it's like, you, you, like I'm just looking at my lineup of like Switch games, of which I have way too fucking many of. And it's just like, even something like Smash Ultimate. Smash Ultimate fucking rules, right? Like, Smash Ultimate's incredible. I don't think anyone's going to deny how good of a game Smash Ultimate is. It rules. Smash Ultimate is safe, though. Sm Smash Ultimate is this, like... Like, they went big and they went fucking ham with, like, the DLC options and how much content they shoved into it. That's absolutely true. But for what you could do with a Smash game, Smash Ultimate is safe in terms of, like, marketing and appeal and stuff like that. What if we made a Smash game with everything in it and then added wild characters? Not, again, the safe option isn't always bad. Like, because like, you could have made a Smash game that reinvented Smash games, but they didn't. They went for whatever was like best of Smash. And again, it doesn't mean that it's bad. I'd obviously prefer Smash Ultimate to be what it is rather than anything else. Just for like. There's been nothing like Smash Ultimate, I don't know there ever will be again. So it doesn't mean that it, does, it being a safe option is bad. But it does fall in the trend of just Nintendo choosing more safe options. They went hard as... That, see, that's the thing. Is that Smash Ultimate's a safe option, but they went hard as fuck with it. Like, they chose the safe option, but they went as hard as they could with it to make it the best it could be. Where I feel like there's been some games where it's just... They go for the same option and then don't do much with it either. Uh, Sazi so McKinnon played Mario with uh, the one game that you just after it was Minecraft Mario. Um, like yeah, I mean, yeah, like, like, you can definitely say that, like, I've heard people say good things about Origami King compared to others, and I will still defend Color Splash. Like, I don't say Color Splash is a perfect name, I don't think it's the best Paper Mario game. I will defend Color Splash though, because it's fighting is so good. I think like exploring levels in Color Splash is fun enough that I was interested to finish the game. Um, it's obviously not amazing, but it's fun enough. Though I found exploring levels to also be fun enough in Sticker Star, though Sticker Star does not have anywhere near as good writing um, as Color Splash and gameplay. Oh, I tried to get the horn off! Fuck, I'm getting it. Um, but I'll defend Color Splash for a But I know people say, oh, generic toads, but um, Color Splash's writing leaned as hard as it fucking could into the generic toads thing that you could not, you could not write Color Splash as a game and have it work as effectively as what it does and have the toads be all individual characters because Color Splash's writing is very specifically about, <laughs> like, Color Splash's writing doesn't work unless um, and stuff like that, and I do think that Color Splash has the best, or at least the funniest writing in any of the Paper Mario games. I love the story of Super Paper Mario, so I don't know if it's the best story out of any But in terms of humor, Color Splash is the funniest um, Paper Mario game. It just is. <laughs> and its humor wouldn't work if the Toads weren't generic characters. Like, I'm not saying they made the Toads generic to do the writing that they did in that. I'm not saying that's what they did. I'm saying they knew the limitation they had in Color Splash of having generic Toads. So they did what they did with it. Like, they were just like, this is a limitation we have. 
let's fix let's work around it like let's take this limitation and and work with what we have to do something that we could only do with this necessity mother of invention and shit like that so i will defend color splash for the um for that idea but yeah you look at something like origami king or color splash even and it's just like for a paper mario game those are safe like super paper mario is an unsafe paper mario game um, it's an un an unsafe Paper Mario game is Super Paper Mario, like. Because the thing is, doing like if you if you just made Thousand Year Door two, that would be safe, because it's what everyone wants. <laughs> everyone would be excited, and again, safe isn't bad, but it'd be what everyone wants. Super Paper Mario was an unsafe Paper Mario. What if we have Paper Mario, but we make it like this weird two D three D shifting thing? And what if we have the story just be fucking wild as hell? And what do we have it be like better and self-referential in so many ways and stuff like that? Just like, um, what if we have this highly compl um, complex um, story in terms of like motives and everything? What if we have it get dark as hell? What if, what if we literally kill Mario in the game? And stuff like that, right? <laughs> so Super Mario is like unsafe of a Mario character. Yeah, fucking cool. If you're, if you're wondering, Super Mario, Super Mario. I love Thousand Angels, don't get me wrong. I love Thousand Angels, I definitely do. But, uh, Super Paper Mario. Super Paper Mario. Um, but yeah, like, Color Splash, like, I, I will defend Color Splash. I defend Color Splash. I have, I have not But really, no. But really not. Do I have to roll this? Bad doing Smash Ultimate on screen? I did do Smash Ultimate on screen. I have, I did do Smash Ultimate on screen. The DLC packs. When DLC packs came out for Smash Ultimate, I played those. I wouldn't do it again now because I have no, I, I have no reason to do Smash Ultimate at this point. Um, to like expand characters, but oh, um, all the character packs. I mean, I played some of the, I, I played some of those in my own time and once they started coming out after I started streaming, I started streaming. I, just, I did, I did a full LB of like a lot of points. <laughs> And I mean full LP, I did every single match. <laughs> I did every single match in my world. Oh, like every single battle. I won 100%. <laughs> uh, I, I like Skull Splash, it's not Oregon King, it's just isn't what I really like about uh, um, like Hank Marvin after some um, um, depth with the match um, system. The batch system rules, right? The batch system definitely rules. I'm not gonna argue with you there. I totally get people, like, I totally get people wanting an RPG turn-based um, Paper Mario game again for the Avengers. I fucking love that. I love that about that as well. I love that as well. Don't get me wrong. I absolutely adore it. What the fuck? They moved now? That motherfucker tried to run me over. I thought they stopped moving in this one. Huh? I thought the cars didn't move in this level anymore. That motherfucker tried to run me over. Okay. Okay. Yeah. D -d Don't get me wrong. Me saying I defend Color Splash and Super Paper Mario being my favorite, that is definitely true. But I agree with everyone else. I would absolutely also love a, um, they update them to move now. Oh, it is an update? Okay, I thought I just never noticed it before. Wow, they actually updated that to, for them to move. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I like Super Paper Mario is my favorite. I defend Color Splash's existence, and I do think its writing is well done. Don't get me wrong. I would also love a new turn-based um, RPG uh, Super Paper Mario game with badges. Playing against your viewers, everyone would wipe the floor with me. I'm incredibly bad at Smash. <laughs> I'm incredibly bad at Smash. I mean incredibly awful at Smash. There's also a thing you gotta remember when it comes to like me like me and my viewers and stuff like that. Most of my viewers don't care when I randomly play games one-off. Most people don't give a shit. <laughs> like you could say I could play against my viewers for um for like like there's two people watching this right now when it goes to teach you like maybe people watching that. Right? <laughs> and you can join it if you want to. You can join in here, you just gotta change the other Right? But like if I if I if I put up like in the schedule, smash against viewers in my screen schedule, two people will join into that stream. People don't care if I play a one-up game. People actively don't give a shit. 
So I could say I want to play with um, viewers. There won't be enough people who watch the stream for that to be like. I, I can't do that as a thing, right? Like, I'm playing Mario Kart on stream right now. Don't get me wrong, I'm having fun playing Mario Kart on stream right now. But, like, I'm doing the stream for the new content, and then using the new content as an excuse to continue playing Mario Kart, because I love playing Mario Kart and stuff like that. And that's what I did with the, uh, the, the Smash. They introduced new characters, and I'd just show them off, and, like, do the things, and then I'd play more Smash. Um, by doing, like, all of the, um, the Spirit Battles for them, because I want an excuse to play Smash. So it's like, it's new content that like justifies its existence, but like, just randomly playing it one off, not a, like, it's not, it's not a case of like, oh, people don't want to watch it, so therefore I shouldn't do it. Okay? I don't care whether, I don't care how many people do or don't watch any individual series. But if that series is literally focused on playing with people, there won't be enough people who watch it to make it a worthwhile series. That's just the reality. Most people don't watch it. Like, I had the idea that I was going to do, um, multiple streams of, um, Mario Party Superstars. It was like, I'll play Mario Party against my viewers and stuff like that. I had that as an idea. It's like, a thing that I would do. And then I played the game when it came out and said, I'll play against people. And we didn't get enough people in that stream to play a full player board. Like, we had to use CPU to fill out, to fill it out. And again, like, I have no issue, I have no issue playing, like, playing something and not many people are going to watch and stuff like that. But, like, unless there's an excuse for doing it, because, like, there is new content to show up or it's a brand new game. Because even, it was like, I have to use that to get enough people to watch it. Like, Super Mario Superstars had to be a brand new game. And I couldn't do that. So if I was just to say, hey, I'm playing Smash this day this week, play against me. There wouldn't be enough people who watch it to actually, like, for it to be a stream about playing against my games. I want playing to get on that stream. I, did we have a second person? Did we have three people in one match? Oh, most of us in, oh, it's in place of a time, then screw it up. I'm in the worst place for streaming. I live in the worst place in the world for streaming. I really do. The time zone, the time zone of being in Sydney is the worst time zone in the world for streaming. It really is. It fucking blows. <laughs> but the only time that's suitable for me to stream is when I first wake up in the morning. And I work six days a week, so I can't do that. <laughs> I work six days a week, so that doesn't work either. Yeah, like, I, like, I'm having fun playing Mario Kart now, and I want to show off the new tracks, and so, like, I don't care that there's not gonna, like, that this video will get less views than anything else I upload this week, or less stream views than anything else I upload this week. I don't care. I want to see the new content, and, and then use, and then play a little bit of fun Mario, um, Mario Kart after that. I'm fine with that. But I'm only doing it because, like, there's new things to show off. Just randomly doing it in of itself. There's just like if the like because the purpose of this like the purpose of this stream of Mario Kart is to show off the new things. This is a little extra we're doing at the end. If the purpose of the stream was to play against viewers, there wouldn't be enough people watching to for that to function. <laughs> Did one match with randoms and then one on on Spaceland with me? Oh yeah, I think that's what it was. Yeah. Harland. It, it was for it was definitely for Halloween. I definitely remember that. Yeah. It was, it was for Halloween, because I made, like, a Halloween box up here and everything, yeah. I do remember that. But, like, that was with a brand new game. That was with a brand new game that a lot of people were excited for. And that's how few people I could get to care. People don't care about me doing random one things. People care about me doing the big things. Which, again, I'm fine doing something if I want to do it for, um, myself that if enough people don't want to watch it, I don't care. But if the purpose is to do it with people who are watching it. Or if I, have a, if I have a choice between things I care equally the same amount about, but more people care about one. Like, if I care about two different ideas the same amount for streaming them, but more viewers care about one, I'll choose one more viewers. That's why I've, I've, that's why I've been putting up loads of, like, which games I've been playing. I have so many options of what I want to play. I don't particularly care which one. Okay, they're doing like doughies now. What the fuck? 
They're not just moving back and forth. They're doing doughies now. What the shit? <laughs> I'm not a massive swing, so I can so... If I don't do something that people don't have an active interest in, oh. Which again, is fun. It creates me. Oh, my god, it's fun. It's also a big part of the reason why I focus on doing um, either games that my personal viewers just seem to really want me to do, and then I'll do that, like say, like say Fire Emblem Three Houses. My viewers just happen to really personally like Fire Emblem Three Houses, and they wanted me to do it, so I did it. I mean, like I'm really loving it, so I'm glad I did it. There's a bunch of like party mates RPGs that I could do. But out of what people want to do, uh, out of like things I could do for that, it was personally around the map. But um, so it's either things that people really want, or I do long form series with multiple games in a row. Because if I do multiple games in a row, then that will attract the people who want to see all of them. Right? If I do a series that's multiple games in a row, like a lot of the running series, people will always want to Probably because there's been multiple games released of that series and there's a lot, a lot of fans of it and people who want to see people play through those games don't want to do it Like Yakuza. Like I'm all, I just finished my fifth fucking Yakuza game. But people are still interested. People who want to watch Yakuza and want to play through all the games. It's kind of I think uh, the only one to play a game you'll get a fair amount of people for is Monster Hunter. Probably not anymore. <laughs> Probably not anymore. Because it's been so long since I've done it. When I started streaming, I was doing Monster Hunter and it was, um... And there was a lot of viewers for it, but because it's been so long since I've done it consistently, people don't care. The people who watched me for Monster Hunter and mainly watched me for Monster Hunter don't watch me anymore because it's been so long since I've done it. <laughs> like I did, like I did a stream of doing Monster Hunter Rise before Sunbreak came out, and I put it on the schedule and everything, and no one cared because <laughs> it's been so long since I've done it that my Monster Hunter viewers went to something else. Uh, there's people who watch my stuff, who watch my stuff, and also like Monster Hunter, and they're still around. Ah, uh, like you, Mikey. <laughs> but the people who watch me for only Monster Hunter, they stopped watching me. So, so even if I went back to like Generations Ultimate now, I don't know if I could do multiplayer in Generations Ultimate because I don't know if the people who watched me to watch me do more Generations Ultimate still notice me or would care that I did it. <laughs> Which is a concern, because we're getting to the point in Generations Ultimate where we're going to be doing everything that's scaled to multiplayer. So either I have to really push myself and do things that are scaled to multiplayer single player, or I have to find viewers for it again, which is scary. Like, at least it, at least when I eventually do some break, at least when I eventually do some break, I can do it on my own and scale it to single player, so I can at least do all of the stuff, um, and things like that. And it's also more recent ones if I want to do multiplayer stuff online, it will be random. But, uh, um, Generations Ultimate, man. <laughs> uh, no, it's specifically scaled. Which is kind of my concern at all. Like, don't get me wrong, I love playing for Generations Ultimate. But there's a reason that the kind of the point where I stopped to playing it on the way scaled Ultimate. I mean, even at the height of me doing Monster Hunter stuff, the height of people watching me do Monster Hunter stuff, I would do the Generations Ultimate streams. On the day of the week when most people could um, tune in because it was on my day off so I could start way earlier and more people could join in and I still couldn't get like full parties of like four hunters including myself. So, that was like a So again, still reasonable. I guess that's since I was either busy, I absolutely have to go to sleep at a good hour because I have to do it next day. Well, I think it's just like, go on. <laughs> there was someone who watched that stream and it was a brand new video. <laughs> There was one viewer for that stream that was brand new. And then when the video went up on me, too, it was Which again, is fine. I want to play Monster Hunter. Like, by the way. But for reasons, I'm not playing Monster Hunter. I will. I will do something at some point. Just right now, I mean, for reasons. Um, like, when I get back to it, I'll be excited enough to play Sunbreak. So that's fine. Even if I don't watch this. But yeah. There was, there was a point where I paid a little bit more to watch me do a lot of That period of that. Because it's been so long. Stop hitting me with bullshit! Stop it! What did I do to deserve this? 
Like, they included all but one of the sound effects on this stage. I find that so weird. Like, if they included one and none of the others, then it would make sense. Or if they included none, it's kind of that it's all but one. Because this will be there to help with any rampages. I think there's some event quest rampage. Because I still want to finish everything that Rise has to offer before we go on this break. Um, I, yeah, I still, like... Whatever Rise has left, I want to do before I start something. And I think some of the event quests are interesting. So I'm not going to do every event quest in the spring. But there are um, event quests in, um, in Rise that are meant to be good. And I'll do those. And I think some of those might be rampages. I don't know. Yeah, I'm up first. I really like this car, by the way. This, this car and wheel combination, aesthetically beautiful as hell, and the controls are really nice. Some event rampages. There's so much to catch up on for me for us. It's really hard for me to keep up with games nowadays. It just is. I'm just I I stream so fucking much, and Final Fantasy XIV just requires so much time to do the stuff in FF14 that you need to do to get ready for the next stream. That it's like fucking goddamn. <laughs> Not worry. It's like goddamn. I, I, I mentioned it earlier. I don't know if I mentioned it in the Mario Kart aspect of the video. Like, I have not played any games this year outside of streaming, except for the games that I've already streamed, and I'm playing them to do something for the stream. <laughs> Damn, what am I going to update something? Should I be able to? I mean, if my game's not updated, I can't do multiplayer anyways, right? You need to be up to date with the most recent version of the game to even do multiplayer and Monster Hunter. So because my game hasn't updated, I don't think you could. I don't think I can do any multiplayer anyways. Why is everyone leaving? So I don't even know if that would fun like physically function. Because I can't play multiplayer. At least I'd assume so, yeah. It'll be fine. That's right, it's, it's gonna be several months before I play it anyway, so it's fine. I'm, prob I'm probably not playing Sunbreak this year, so. It'll be a while anyways. We'll work something out. There's a half decent chance that all of the updates will finish for um, Sunbreak before I play. Actually, I say half decent. Almost guaranteed, considering the updates for Rise came out like within the space of two or three months. I'm literally the game. So I can pretty much guarantee the updates will finish for Sunbreak before I play. Like, I love Monster. Too many games exist. Too many games exist. Too many fucking games. No! This is also why I put this like doing. Oh! Let's just play Smash Brothers as a stream. It's also another reason why that's a bad idea. Any stream that I do that isn't one of the main games that I'm working on takes away a stream that I can be working on. I need to wear my layered of the um, Crimson Valstrax armor on top of my Crimson Valstrax armor. <laughs> this music gets used so often. I mean, it's a fucking banger. This music is a banger, and I get it. But it's so funny how this this one track that is like used a shitload in a lot of Mario games is just from a random cloudy galaxy in Galaxy 1. Like they were making like 40 different galaxies for Galaxy 1. And then the composer was just like, okay, and for this one, where you grab dandelions and fly through and fly through things, and just fly, fly through a bunch of clouds, and there's a bunch of rabbits. I'm going to, for this one, write an orchestral masterpiece of music. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Okay. And then it's been used like shitload of things. This is where I think it was one of the things that I was like, he uh, let our players know the armor. Uh, I guess he has to follow up.
It's alright, it's monster hunter. People will spoil everything all the time no matter what. People will spoil mechanics of a monster four seconds before I'm about to start the fight. Oh, before you start the fight against this monster that is brand new and unique and nothing else exists like it in the series, here are all the unique and interesting mechanics that it has. Thanks. Thanks. So don't worry, it's monster hunter. No, I'll be spoiled on it no matter what anyway. So you know the main reason I need to hurry up and play Monster Hunter? Which I'm still on this year. You know the main reason that I need to like play Monster Hunter? It's not to give my viewers content for a, a game that they want to watch. It's so I can watch Pro and Noob. <laughs> it's, it's so I can watch Josh and Cotton do Pro and Noob. I remember that good god. Yeah, Monster Hunter was one of the bad ones. Also part of the reason why I'm hesitant to go back to the game. But like, I very explicitly got that, um, with certain monsters. Fucking Chameleos. Chameleos has a, uh, like a bunch of stuff that is very unique to, Mc um, Chameleos, and no one else, and no other monsters do it. And people are just like, let me tell you about them literally as you're loading the hunt. Thanks. Thanks. Like, I, I will play more Monster Hunters again, at some point. I just don't know what that is. Elden Ring one day? I own Elden Ring's on- Elden Ring's a game that is on the list. Elden Ring's a game that's on the list. The idea is once we finish up all the games that, like, currently won votes... So, like, we finish, uh, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Hollow Knight, and then after those is Disco Elysium and 13 Sentinels. Once we finish all of those things, I have a list of like 40 to 50 fucking games. And the idea is just going to be, here's all the different games that I could play. You all can choose what I play. I have too many options. And then I'll just play whatever has the most interest. Because out of all, like, if something is very specific, I personally want to play this more than others. Then I will just do that, right? That's why I started Celeste. Um... But for all the things on that list, I don't really care which one I play. All of them have been, like, seem interesting for people have told me. So, because this is, because, especially with streaming, because it's such a social experience of, like, talking to people and everything, like, it's more, ex it's, like, I get excitement from, like, playing the game and, um, and doing everything to it. Um, more people who care about the series mean more people get to be excited by watching me do it. And also, if more people are tuning into the streams, more people get to live react and chat about the game that we're playing as I'm playing the So that, that, that's why, like, my focus is just, like, that's why my focus now is about what people find the most interesting. It's not because I need those fewer numbers to increase for any, like, more it's just if more people are um, interested in the game that I'm doing, then it is just a more fun game. Now that's been the case with uh, Fire Emblem 3 Houses. The fact that there's so many people who care about Fire Emblem 3 Houses means every single time that I play, there's a shitload of people to chat to. There's a shitload of, like, dialogue and conversation going on. We're throwing jokes back and forth with each other. We're talking about things. We're discussing ideas and theories and things like that. Um, fucked up implications about how evil Raya is and shit like that. So we're discussing all of that. Like, that's happening because there's really stuff and all shit and Um... Like, there's just more people watching my god. There's just more people tuning in to the opportunities for that, so... That's why I want to focus on stuff that people want to see more than It's why, like, I'm trying to play through every single, um, Ace Attorney and Metal Gear Because I know my viewers really want to see me play Metal Gear and Ace Attorney. So, if I play through all those games, it gives people a whole bunch of games that a lot of people are excited for. But in terms of like anything that isn't like one of the big series that I'm working on, or all the things that people literally already think of, it's just a case of I'll play it if enough people are interested. In it. The more people that are interested in the series, the more fun people do that series. Stop it! And so Elden Ring is the case of the yeah. game. Elden Ring went on to the boat um, earlier this year, and it was beaten out by a shitload of other things. It's not like Like, out of the vote, like, I put on, like, 15 games, um, this, um, earlier this year for the big vote, and Elden Ring was one of them. 
but like Fire Emblem Three Houses, Hollow Knight, um, Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, Celeste, um, 13 Sentinels, and Disco Elysium. All of those beat Elden Ring. So... Will I play Elden Ring? If enough people care. <laughs> After I finish all those things. That... Any, any game that you could ask me to... That if I'm going to play it, that's the response. <laughs> any game that you can ask, will I play it, is will enough people be interested in it? Yeah, I don't need the viewer numbers for the validation of I need people to care about this. Um, otherwise, um, I'm not validating enough by not having a big enough number. But because this is a social experience, the more people who are interested in it, the more people who end up happy. And also the more people who are actively there, the better the experience is because there's more conversation going on. Kind of like. It's again why I wouldn't just load up a random day of Smash Ultimate against Fields because not enough people would care to just like, it wouldn't be an experience. Because there wouldn't be enough people to show up to even find, like, a bunch of people. So I say I wouldn't enjoy playing Smash Ultimate. Again, I did more than like the DLC since I love this video. How to finish up three hopes I can get back to Monster Hunter. There's too many fucking video games. There's too many fucking video games. It's kind of why I only play games with That it's worth, it's worth like, um, Monster Hunter and Final Fantasy XIV are kind of perfect for it, um, in that regard, because people want to see me play those games on the screen, right? FF14 is the most popular, but the people who really, but the people who want FF14 really want FF14, so that's like a, there's not as many people, but the people who are there are dedicated as well, and also whenever we stream it, there's multiple people actively playing with me, so it may, like, the, the lesser number of people is made up by the passion and um, more like more interacting with the that so the increase of social aspects of uh, it. Uh, like as someone who basically only ever plays games on stream nowadays, because I don't have time to like do a playthrough of a game outside of that, it's kinda why Monsanto and FF14 are perfect games um, for me to stream and play in my own time. Because both of those games have enough content that I can just slowly work on. Um, while I'm not streaming, and then just go on, and then get ready on screen for like, the big steps that were done with all of the work that I'm on stream. I kind of have like, no plans to play games off of stream anymore, unless it's FF or game. I, I think about any other games that I'm just like, ooh, that looks like an interesting game, and I'm just like, am I gonna play it off stream? Like, will I play it off stream enough to like, warrant playing it? Probably not. Splatoon's also that, actually. Splatoon is also that. I can play Splatoon on stream when, like, new weapons drop and new things are happening, uh, with the big Splatfest, with the story mode, but I can also just, like, play casually just a bunch of, like, online games in my own time. Get enough money to, like, set up any outfits and play on stream. Splatoon also feels like that. So they're kind of, like, the only real games that I plan on ever playing as I'm playing. Everything else is kind of, like, like, some games can look cool and interesting, but I'm just like, oh. Like, playing that off-stream? Eh, I don't know. I've turned video games into such a social experience now, especially with streaming, that I kind of don't want to play games that aren't social in my own time. I mean, there's also, you can see the definitive, uh, it's not just that they're games that have a lot of content to play off of stream and then do the big things on stream for Final Fantasy XIV, Monster Hunter, and Splatoon. What's also the thing all of those have in common? They're all social games because they're all multiplayer games. <laughs> so if I'm playing games off of stream, I'm I'm, I would also be playing um, social games. I, I watch my show about uh, playing since a fair idea to make matches unbearable to play. I know you don't live in the apartment building next to me, so it would be awful. It's like Mario Kart, um, Mario Party Mario Kart, where it is that bag that someone likes. Remember that one drag race, uh, like minigame being annoying with the heck? Nintendo! When are you getting rollback netcode? Evo just happened and they announced rollback netcode for basically every fighting game. Fucking Dragon Ball Fighters got rollback. Nintendo, when are you gonna introduce rollback? And I, I've definitely turned gaming into a very interesting, like, 
I, like, I, it's the type of thing that anyone who's a streamer experiences it. I, I've seen a lot of streamers talk about it. And, it. and it doesn't have to be you're a huge streamer, just if you are a consistent streamer in any capacity. Um, or just like even just a content creator for video games. Um, it completely changes how you interact with the media. It really does. It really does. Like, I remember Max put up a video where it was just like, um, I think it was for Elden Ring. We got access to Elden Ring, like, um, as a beta or a pre-release thing for, like, fun games or something before it came out. And the whole thing was just like, he couldn't stream it, but he could, like, record it and then upload his, um, um, upload the videos afterwards and, like, only involve certain kinds of things like he could stream the game live. And he was like, okay, I'll do that. And then he uploaded a video where he's just like, I don't know how to do this at all. It's like, I stream games for so much of my life now, and everything about streaming is about the social element of, like, everything about gaming is about the social element of streaming. And that's what, like, what video games are for me nowadays. And it's like, I don't know how to play video games anymore without the chat. It's like, I straight up, I don't know how to. That's not how video games function for me anymore. It hasn't been for years. And, um... Like, I, I, I played more games in my own time when I was only doing, like, let's play in terms of, like, um, pre-recorded things that I upload on YouTube afterwards, but I wasn't live. Um, ever since I've done, ever since I've shifted to streaming, I'm the exact same. I, it's, like, it is hard for me to know how to play games in my own time. It really is. Like, and it, and it is serious in that aspect of just, like, I don't, I miss it. It is serious in that aspect of, I don't know how to. It's not that, I, it's not even a, a case of, I don't necessarily enjoy it as much or anything. Uh, I don't know how to. I, I don't know how to play games anymore without actively chatting with people discussing it. I don't know how to play games anymore without, like, recording my reactions. Again, the only games that I do off of stream nowadays are games that I'm already streaming that are already multiplayer focused, so I can still play with um, people and stuff like that, and where there's enough fun, there's too much content in the game for me to stream all of it, so I will um, do like the more busy work stuff off the screen to get ready. Like, I don't know how to treat video games. I'm not like that anymore. I don't know. I'm getting no troubles with Monton um, when we played together. Monton of Rise's netcode is really good for some reason, even on Switch. I don't get it. Uh, my party went fine, and my car um, was good, so my internet is like, not me to play anymore. Well, Smash is just notorious like that for having like terrible um, connections. Smash is just notorious for that. You mean the SNS Rainbow Road? Do it. <laughs> But yeah, when I was watching his video of him describing that, I'm just like, fucking dude, I'm I'm not even someone who like has like like Max is one of the biggest streamers out there. Like I like I don't like he's not like the biggest, but I'm pretty sure he's in the top 100. I'm pretty sure Max is in the top 100 streamers on Twitch, right? So he's pretty fucking huge in that regard. And I'm just like, dude, I'm not even anywhere even remotely close to approaching anything even close to that, right? But fucking, I feel you. I feel you when you when he when he talks about just like again, again streaming, especially normal like again normal let's plays and stuff. It was a little bit of that, just like normal like record an LP, put it onto YouTube after the fact. It was a little bit with that, but especially turning it into streaming. Streaming completely changes how you how you experience games. It compl like it rewrites how your brain experiences it. It really does. It really does. And don't get me wrong, I fucking love it. I would not want to go back to not being a streamer. I I wouldn't. <laughs> I enjoy video games at their base level more than I ever have in, like, in my life um, ever since I've been a streamer. Just like the concept of video games, I love more now than I ever have in my entire life. Um, I have more fun with video games now than I ever have before. I enjoy playing through them stuff more than I ever have because I'm streaming. I would never want to not be a streamer in this. Um, but, 
but it definitely changes how you experience it. It rewrites how you experience it. That playing games off stream is a odd experience. And even with stuff like um, Splatoon and Monster Hunter, um, like Splatoon, Monster Hunter, and FF14, I talk about like I play those games off stream because they're games that I play on stream and they're social games. So, like, I can still do that. The thing with all of those is that even when I'm not playing, because I, I remember I did this with Splatoon 4, so I know with Splatoon 3 is the same when it comes out. And Monster Hunter and FF 14 are definitely good. When I play those games off screen, it's not like, like, when I'm streaming, right? I will sit down. I will sit down for streaming, and I will stream for several hours in a row, right? Uh, I'll, I'll just be sitting here, just full-on gaming, non-stop gaming, for like, three to four hours. Or if it's FF14, it'll go even longer. I'll have like a toilet break and a food break or something, right? And you can say how long stuff it is, so you stop the I completely fucked up that turn, I'm the last time. Awesome! Um... But, um... Even for those games, and it's probably a big part of why I would play Pokemon play games, and that's most other things. All of those games have like chill hangout spots that you can sit in in between actively playing the game. Like when I when I boot up Monster Hunter to play um, off stream, when I boot up FF14 off stream to play, I don't play it like I do on stream. I don't sit down for four hours straight, just non-stop playing the game. I will like I will do a hunt in Monster Hunter. And just leave my character sitting there for a bit while I go do some while I'm doing something else. And when I finish something, or like I finish watching this video, I might pop in and do like another hunt or two. When I'm doing FF14, I'm usually just like waiting for like the daily daily roulettes to pop, and then I'll play that, and then I'll load up the next daily roulette while I go and do something else. So like even those games, I don't play them the same way that I play um, play them on stream. I can't just sit down and just play them for hours upon hours upon hours anymore. Because if I'm gonna sit down and play something for hours upon hours upon hours straight without even stopping, I want it to be with the chat kind of thing. It's a, it completely changes how you experience video games. It really does. I love smashing and playing someone competitively in the online group I'm in. I saw the group, uh, now we do uh, Unite instead. I saw since it was so dodgy. Oh, Unite is definitely better. I just love playing Unite because of the, um, because of the battle pass. But anyway. Um, I, I'm gonna end it there. I, we ended it on a rainbow road. And we've gone for like two hours or so. Yo, the Sydney track is really good. Like, the new tracks are good. The new tracks are fun, right? I do like the new tracks. <laughs> nice Rosanna Parker outfit. Uh, the new track, let's just have a look at them, right? I can just look at them. I can't play any of them. Just, just, just look at them. To go over them and stuff like that. Like, um, New York, New York Minute is cool. I like, like, New York Minute is fun. I do think out of the two tracks, it's the least interesting. Like, it switches up and how you move around. Although, I guess Par Paris Promenade is like that as well. So maybe it's just like kind of like Paris Promenade. Paris Promenade just really stood out because of how it changed everything. But in terms of actual turns and everything, New York Minute is probably a better Paris Promenade. Um, and stuff like that. Mario Circuit 3 is Final Destination Mario Kart. It's like, I like that thing, but I get why people don't. Calamari Desert, the fact that it makes you onto the train track is hilarious. Um, w Waluigi Pinball, fantastic course. Love, love that course. It's awesome. I love that. Um, Snowland's cute. Snowland's a cute course. Um, cute course. Uh, it's not incredible or mind blowing, but I, but but it was quite enjoyable. Mushroom Gorge. Mushroom Gorge is an iconic track. I'm so bad at it. I, I, I when we went back onto it, I remembered that I'm really fucking bad at Mushroom Gorge. I don't know optimal ways to go over the mushrooms in any capacity. I fuck up the mushrooms constantly. And the moment that I start hitting the mushrooms, I'm just like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Fuck. Right, I'm really bad at this, aren't I? Shit. Uh, Sky High Sunday is an awesome course. It's so wild. It's awesome. And um, But the highlight for me is obviously Sydney Sprint. I don't think Sydney Sprint is the best in terms of track layout. I think it's one of the better ones in terms of track layout for, um, for this wave. It's not the best, but I think it's one of the better ones, right? Um, but, as someone who lives in Sydney, I don't live in the city of Sydney, right? 
I'm quite a distance away, actually, from this. Like, I, I am in Sydney, but I'm not in the city of Sydney, because Sydney counts a huge-ass fucking area, um, for some reason. So I'm not in the city of it, but, like, that city that you see in there, I've been to it shitloads of times. I've lived in this city basically my entire life. Like, I think we were on, like, a bit past the outskirts of the city when I was, like, born, um, like, when, we were, when I was born. And then since, like, five years old, I've lived in Sydney my entire life. I've been to that harbour countless times in my life, and I imagine people do have it. Like, I imagine the people who live in New York. I imagine the people who live in Tokyo. I imagine the people who live in Paris. I imagine the people who live in Ninja Hideaway, right? I imagine all of them have similar things when it comes to, yo, it's the track in my area, and I know it. Like, if you're in Paris Promenade, you've got the Arc de Triomphe, I think is in here. You've got the Eiffel Tower and stuff like that. But the other city streets probably do have specific things about them. The New York Minute probably has certain things about just like, yo, that's meant to be like um, Times Square. This is obviously Central Park and stuff like that. That's obviously the dude who always harasses and sexually assaults me as I walk through Central Park, right? Like, like New York Minute has that, right? I imagine that same thing does exist for other people. But as someone who lives in Sydney, fucking whole, holy shit, Sydney Sprint nails it. The thing that nails it the most for me is the fact that the interior of the Sydney Opera House fucking looks like the interior of the Sydney Opera House. Obviously, like, the whole layout there isn't or anything like that. But the stands that are there and the paneling on the walls, that is the interior of the Opera House. That is the aesthetic that they have. And the little island that it's on, like, when you walk up to the Opera House, like, it's a lot higher off the ground, so it's not this exact angle. But, like, when you walk up to the Opera House, you're walking at it from that angle. And it has, like, those, like, the bench, like, the rails that go around to the side, and it's, like, it's on, like, it's, it's on the peninsula kind of thing. That's what it is. And then, like, you go through, um, like, some of the beachside areas. Like, you've got that drive around. I can't remember the name of it. There's that, like, there's that grass area that's on the end. My brain is saying Barangaroo, but I could be wrong about that. I can't remember where that is or which part of it is, but I like I know that walk. I've been along that walk. The Harbour Bridge is there. Like the Harbour Bridge has like the middle divider thing, because um, I think that's where like the trains go on for, across the Harbour Bridge. So it's got, like it's got that section in the middle. And th there obviously isn't any trains there. It's all the jumps, but like there is a thing that divides the middle of the Harbour Bridge, and that's there. And then it's got the four pylons on, on either side. You can see in the distance. Oh look, it's the um, it's the Center Point Tower. There is a building that is just like that is Town Hall. Town Hall isn't at the harbour, but Town Hall does exist in Sydney. And you drive faster, and it's just like, oh shit, I know that, it's Town Hall, holy crap. Like, I imagine other places have that as well, but Sydney has it, and I know that. So I just look at it, and I'm just like, oh, they did it right! They actually got all the stuff, I love it. Disappointing as Mario through this, um, since I didn't anything to do to it, at least the NES Rainbow Road has the forms to make the road wavy. I mean, SNES Rainbow Road is also just a really well done track, because it's high fast, it's like, it's it's high paced, or fast paced, high track, where you want to take all the turns to get the biggest boost you can, because the, the, the curves are just designed in a way to give you, like, a really easy way of, like, getting a shitload of boosts, but also you can fly off the edge at any point. So SNES Rainbow Road is really interesting for that, and then again, they added the extra stuff. Yeah, Mario, Mario Circuit 3 is just... Mario Circuit 3. Obviously, Sydney Sprint's the standout for me, but that's because I live in Sydney and I can recognize all the things. And as a track with its like courses and everything, it's 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 well done. It is well done. They 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 nailed Sydney. <laughs> I will say that. But what you can turn Sydney into in a Mario Kart thing, I think they did a really good job. Because like even like the ferries in it and stuff. It's like and the ferries are very close to um uh to the Opera House. Like down like there's the there's the, the opera house is like up here, then there's one like strip there, which like has all restaurants and stuff. And at the end of that strip, that's where the ferries are. So it's like, hey, like the, and they got the ferries there next to the opera house. It's like really cool. I love it. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in another couple months when we do, wow. Wow, it's the rock mushroom. The boulder mushroom from Mario Galaxy 2. I think that's the only game that the boulder mushroom's ever been in. Wow, that's a fucking obscure power up. And of course, and of course, the moon. From Odyssey. The God, God. The Rock Mushroom may be the, one of the more obscure power ups in a Mario game because it's only in Galaxy 2. Wow. Anyway, I will see you then for, um, for doing that stuff. So thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, this is version 2, signing out.